Just overall, how are you feeling, Bob? I mean, you got a uh, split on the road, but I know you weren't happy Friday night. Well, you know, we got a point out of it, you know, yeah. uh, which might end up being huge. That I didn't, you know what, I, I, just to kind of put it in a wrap it up, when we left the Notre Dame series, you know, I was a little critical of some of our, our looseness. Yeah. And, but it's hard to get to a team when you win two games because they like, coach, what are you talking about? And Friday, there we were again with a lead twice. And it's the same theme that was kind of uh, was distracting. We needed to, and, and it bit us. Because we were playing pretty good. I mean, we had 80 shot attempts, and, and we had guys playing, but our looseness, our, our, our attention, not, not real strong on detail, cost us that game. And, and then we had their attention. And then I give our guys a lot of credit where they responded and they needed to respond the way they did. And we came out, you know, we came out with a you know, first period, took the charge of the game and then played a very smart game and stayed within good structure and, 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 and got a big win for us on the road. So let, let's, part, let's hope that's part of our learning learning process and that you know they can pick up on that and really take hold of it you've been coaching for a long time is this kind of a tough time as a coach to teach those details no. every week and, and repeat messages no I mean it's just you know we're, we're 10 games in and you know, so it's you know it would it, would, it has been there from the start this little and it just every team has something that you know, except you've heard me. Some of those older teams got off to great starts because they get right up back on top of it. We we had our little like a lot of teams, and you got to straighten it out. And you know, the fact that I've been here a long time, I've seen it many times. And, um, and I don't want to say we're through it yet, but I think we're in the right direction. With, with respect to trying to get that consistency at this stage early in the season. Is that something you expect to, to, you know, when you're putting your season plan together that this is going to be kind of something that you have to get over? You, you always expect something's going to pop up. <laughs> you, you know, that, that, you know, conversely, last year was those of the year, you, know, you get off to a 10 or a start, you know, that doesn't happen very often anywhere. And, and you kind of learn mistakes while you're winning. Sometimes you got to get bumped and to get attention. Uh, it's just, and it was just detail. I like, I really like how some of our young guys are starting to come around. Uh, we got some older guys feeling good about their game. Uh, our defensive core was a little loose, early, you know, a little early, but you know they're, you know, uh, they're starting to turn the screwdriver a little bit, and tighten up. So we're, we're we're moving in that that, that direction. Bob, you talk about your freshmen making an impact, and you're seeing, you know, seemingly more and more of an impact from them every week. But Nyes has been there right from the start. I mean, what what allowed him to have that just immediate jump into college hockey? Well, I mean, he's he's physically not young. Right? Like that's yeah. when you have that kind of size and skating ability and strength, you know. And then you know, we have a tough schedule. He he, he, he could kind of though he he shows some freshman moments, but. He can, you know, there's two things that get you through as a freshman. If you are really fast, you know, elite speed, which we saw Sammy when he was young, yep. or you have that physical strength. And then with experience, you know, you see all of that grow. And, and we've got some guys that, you know, I, I thought, like Hugelin, we've been watching that come. Uh, Bros and Pitlick, and these are guys that have played two years in the USHL. Um, this is the biggest jump I, I believe that players take is from junior hockey to college. College to pro is not as big a jump. This is the biggest. And sometimes these young guys come in and they just think they're going to pick right up where they left junior hockey. And, you know, they get thumped. Yeah. And they got to work through it. We're seeing our guys just 10 games in really starting to, to, to you know, and you asked about Nyes, but that's pretty self explanatory. Big, strong kid that, that we're, seeing, we're seeing the rest of the group. Now we'll get you know, Lucius back hopefully in another week. And you know, those are important players for us. The big goals that we got out of Nyes and Hugo the other night. You know, two freshmen to lead us right out of the bat. You mentioned Sammy. Um, 
his parents said that when he was a kid, they called him the stunt man because he just had no fear. Is that goal well, he scored I, uh, uh, I, an example? I didn't see it on film until the bus. I don't know how he was on the bus with us. <laughs> I, I have, like that was, <laughs> I just know how we didn't follow him off the ice. But I just, from the bench, he was down. I saw a little smile on his face. I go, good, he's okay. <laughs> but it looked bad, but on film, it's really bad. But I mean, that shows he is, he is fearless. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's a real compliment to our group right now is, is we're banged up. And we, we're battling a lot of, you know, issues. And we got guys battling right through it. And it, it's not been a, uh, it hasn't hindered us. It hasn't held us back. And I was, couldn't be more impressed. You know, there's a handful of guys that I can't mention that were 50-50 to play Saturday, to play, you would not even know that, that, that they're battling through right now. There's a little tough underbelly in our team that, that uh, pretty cool. I was going to ask about Lucius and Krukchank. Any updated timeline on them? Do you expect to have them this weekend? No. Okay. Coach, with them being out, do you expect Schmitty to get into the lineup for, for the first time this weekend? It, he, he almost played on Saturday. But if you, if you read between the lines, we, we, we had a couple of D that were dinged up, so we stayed with 70. Um, because we didn't know how we would get through. And I, I got a feeling he's getting close. We were, we're down in numbers. And it would be great to, for him to get in there. He, he's earned the shot if we can have it. But when you and, and, and now Stoddicker's out Friday night. Yep. There's a real good chance. But we're, we're, it's Tuesday, so. Uh, can you give like an overview of the freshman class? Are they as far along as you had hoped? Or Further along, not as far. Well, well I kind of just did that, but I'll do it. Like, uh, I, I think they're. I've always thought, and, and, and this is now a little how I kind of think. The four by four never changes. You see a lot of freshman goalies; they just go in the same four by four since they were, you know, uh, pee wees. They, you know, and you see a lot of freshmen can have success in goal defense. They're not getting points, but they can play. Freshman defensemen can can survive and learn. You know, just be very cautious and not get in trouble. It's I think one of the biggest jumps for freshmen is playing forward because they want to be involved in the offense. They wanted, you know, they were recruited. They and it is hard ice. Look at those teams we play, and those freshmen are, you know, you know, nice off. We're seeing Hugo come. You know, Lucius got hurt. We're seeing that group. You, I'm really happy with that group. Now, they're going to tell you they're, you know, oh, I'm off to a bad start. A couple of them, you know, and they're not. It's the same. We've all seen that. But there's a day when I call it the light bulb goes on. And I thought this weekend, I thought that was the best we've seen Bros and Pitlick. Uh, I, we've been seeing it out of Hewlett for a few weeks. And it, it's like, train going uphill and then once you get to the other side you start playing hockey and I you know I think it's I think it's looking good right now you you've often said you want to get older these freshmen aren't necessarily calendar old but they played a lot of junior yeah. hockey do you think that's helped their adjustment and kind of balances that out well for sure I, I, I there's no question and, and um, you know they got over 90 games you know most of you know I know Hughie was injured for, for a good chunk of his time, but you know, two years of riding the bus and, and doing that is, is, you know, you saw Ben Myers come in after two years, but at an older age. Um, so they got some experience. They're going to be just fine. I, I, I hope in a month from now, if you ask me that question again a month from now, I hope it's another big step, but it's sure looking that way. Not that uh, play with LaFontaine and uh, Zach Lucas had in that little lane, just like got pinched back. You feel like you dodged a bullet, and it, it certainly looked scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a scary moment, and I think I think the biggest thing is is what had happened there. It scared him, yeah. and then you know, once medical people said, you know, you dodged a bullet, you know, we breathe. I, I thought I was set for the night. 
after we talked to the medical people, I went back in the coach's room and we're getting ready to go out. They said, no, Lapper's playing. So. Oh. And he's good, no, no effects of it at all. He's fine. I, I have zero. And he was, you know, he was right, he's right back at it this week doing what he does. So, I mean, you, so, I mean it's, it's, you know, you're an athlete. You, you kind of get, uh, you know, it scares you a little bit, especially in, in areas like that. It scares the heck out of you. You've been an assistant coach here and a head coach here. You've also been an opposing coach in this building. Well, what about 3M Arena at Mariucci do you like? What's your favorite part of it? Well, when, it, you, when the tide starts to turn, it's intimidating uh, in here. When, you know, you know and I've, how many times the hand goes up and we go for power play comes out and the building starts to turn and you score a goal. Um, our, our fans are very knowledgeable. That's another thing. They appreciate good hockey. Uh, and when, when our guys are working and, and bringing that hockey, our fans, you know, I, I, I think they're the most intelligent hockey fan there is. Uh, I, I, and I've always felt that. And uh, that's why you have to do something to get them going. And, and then they, and that good play, good hard play, good goal. And then uh, and our student section has been outstanding this year. Yep. Our Halloween weekend was a little tough, but we're going to see that come back. Have you taken a look at the Buckeyes yet, or is that coming just, later just, in the week? No, we're, we're starting to get into it. What, you know, Steve, good. Steve and Steve always seem to put something together there. Oh, yeah, they're, they're loving laying in the weeds because they knew that they were really affected by COVID last year. Yep. And uh, they were real, they liked where the coaches picked them because they knew they were, you know, uh, I'm pretty close with that staff. Secret now, they're a pretty good hockey team. Yeah. Goalies run in unbelievable numbers. Uh, they're gonna be a good hockey team. Yeah. Coach, I just want to talk about what you've seen from their freshman goalie. Obviously, you just mentioned he's got a big number. We're just, we're just getting into it. So okay. I just look at the numbers and go, wow. <laughs> you know, you know, we, we just put our last weekend and now we're digging into that. Anything else for Coach? Goalie depth hasn't really mattered yet, but uh, it may all of a sudden with the with that, what happened Saturday at Boynton uh, back yet, or where, where do you he, see he him? He practiced today. Okay. Yeah, today was, you know, today's back in there. Good. Fans haven't seen the arm go up too often for the officials to give the power plays. Do you notice anything with officiating this year or style of play that impacts that? You work on the power play a lot, and it's looked good when you had it. <laughs> Thirty thousand foot view. So you know, any. Well, two games recently, not this weekend. We have one power play in each game. You know, the you know, the other night we had eighty shot attempts. We had the puck a lot. I think we had two power plays. I mean, sometimes when te when teams don't take a lot of penalties. You know, that's just, the, and I have seen this, that when teams don't take a lot of penalties, refs kind of don't call a lot of penalties. Um, and it's just something where, you know, from 30,000 feet, do I think we should have a few more power plays? Yep, but I'll bet the opposing coach would say the same thing. I think we should have a few more power plays. But I, I do, when you, you know, a little pattern now, one power play, one power play, two power plays, and, and uh, you know, maybe give us two power plays. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm not, we're, we're doing our stuff in practice, you know, big power play goal the other night, um, so we're, we're trying to stay sharp on it. Turn the recorders off and you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>